Hi, Tim. Hi, Nancy. Tim and Nancy, can you both hear me? I can't. I can't. Okay. Awesome. No. No. Good, good, good. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay. I'm going to eat through this whole meeting, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's dinner time. It's dinner time and it's really hard. I don't know. I just walked in from the grocery store and got my groceries put away and I'm starving. <sighs> so anyway. I don't know. It's very rude, although it does seem to be happening. <laughs> a lot of these meetings. <laughs> that's why I, I think everybody, that's why we leave it on no video, maybe, which I usually don't do and I don't like to do. <laughs> no worries. Hi, David. Hello. Good evening. Hey, David. Hi, David. I haven't met you yet, but I'm Nancy Wilson. Who we can't see. <laughs> oh, the Zoom conferences. You gotta love them. <laughs> gotta love them. We do. <laughs> when was the last time you guys met in person? Oh, we've never met in person. Oh. <laughs> I think it was our retreat, wasn't it? Yeah, probably. Um, oh, yeah, at our at our annual retreat, which amounts to going down to City Hall and meeting. Or, I don't know why my video won't start. There we go. There we go. I'm on a tablet, which makes it seem a little bit, which is not as easy as my laptop. <laughs> is there anybody who's not going to be here tonight, Tim? Yes. Um, Judith isn't going to be here tonight because it's Passover. And um, I didn't try to to reschedule everybody else so that we could get Judith here tonight to, on a separate night. Um, and then um, Robin has said that she's not going to be here. Robin? So, yeah, Robin Kovac. Um, she didn't give any reason. Okay. So I'm not going to be there. So, okay. Hmm. Hope everybody else comes. I hope so. By the way, um, I see you have me down for 10 minutes for the goals section, which is yeah. fine. But I thought we agreed that it was going to be 15 minutes in the future, no? We did agree with that, and then it hasn't taken 15 minutes yet, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> If it takes 15 minutes, it, it'll take, yeah, we'll stretch it to okay. 15 minutes. But it hasn't seemed to take that much time. Um, gotcha. Not that I'm trying to shortchange it. Okay. So. Hmm. <sighs> 
Well, we've got a few minutes to go. Hopefully, we'll we'll get at least two more. So I know David was at the last meeting. Did what? Did he give a little? Uh, did you give a little bio and talk about your interest in OSAC, or are we waiting till tonight? Um, we're we're doing it kind of twice, which is okay. Um, David came in, I think, two months ago and gave a little bio and, and talked with us a little bit and, and hung out in the meeting. Um, since then, he has uh, put in the, his uh, application and uh, his letter of intent, which I hope we all read. Um, Great. OK, good. I'm sorry I missed the last one. Or maybe I didn't. It's just in the audience or something. <laughs> Wasn't the last meeting the one that had some Zoom issues? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, I could not log on to that one, so I missed it as well. I hear you got it fixed. <laughs> Which we did. Um, uh, Brad Barr or uh, what's what's Brad? He's our. He's our parks manager, and, and that was parks my manager. fault. I did not set Brad up for success by accident. Uh, so my link is the link that kind of lets everyone else in, and I didn't give that to Brad that night he led the meeting. So uh, definitely apologies for that. Yeah, I was going to say that uh, Brad uh, managed to figure out another way to get us all in on, on Microsoft meetings. So it worked out. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get to you in time, uh, David. Um, I suspect there will be a couple more people meeting tonight. It's very rare that we don't have enough people to yeah. conduct the meeting. Let's see, who should we be calling? TJ? Yeah, TJ is always a question mark. Um, he's got such a strange schedule. Actually, I'm gonna let TJ in now. Oh, good. Hey, that's great. And there's Cheryl. Good. Good. Okay. We've got a party. All right, let's give it a couple of more minutes um, for those people that are a little bit late. I think that's everybody. If Robin and and Judy, Judith, Jul, Julie aren't coming, right? Let's see. Um, Is Judy gonna make it tonight? Judy cannot make it. It's Passover, so that's a big day for her. Um, oh, okay. I thought you said Judith earlier. I, I oh, Judith. Chandler. There's somebody who is not here, yeah. Chandler, Denise Howe. Okay, I think that's it. So uh, why don't we get going here? If I'm squinting at the, uh, squinting here trying to read things, it's because my uh, um, laptop uh, 
screen is going out on me. <laughs> Luckily, I'm in the process of switching things over to a new computer, which is a nightmare. But uh, anyway, um, we will convene uh, the April 22nd, 2024 meeting of OSAC. And currently in attendance is our, uh, myself, Tim Beeson, Nancy Wilson, Andrea Zutella, uh, Cheryl Klein, and um, TJ Maltese. And Steve Bremner has joined us as well. That's great. Um, we also have guests, uh, David uh, Conley, who is uh, an applicant to become a, um, a, a member of OSAC. And I believe Danu has just joined us. That's great. Okay. Uh, so we've got a... Got a good set of people there. Okay, well, the first thing that we do is I get over and look at the agenda. Okay, first on the list is, of course, our call to order, which we just did. And then uh, we have openings for uh, two alternates. And one of the uh, uh, applicants, one applicant for an alternate slot is David Conley, who's joined us tonight, who also sent in his letter of intent, which I hope everybody had a chance to uh, read. Um, this is our official opportunity after he's uh, submitted his paperwork to ask any questions that we have and interview uh, David. Um, after that, we will dismiss David from the meeting so that we can then uh, vote on his application. And I don't know, we can always invite uh, David back in after that, I suppose, um, and probably would be a good idea. Uh, I'll shoot uh, David an email after, after our vote. And if he wants to come back in as a guest at that point, that would be great. Okay, um, so anybody who has hopefully had a chance to read his uh, letter of intent, which I think summarize his interest and um, abilities quite nicely. Anybody that has a question, please uh, raise your hand. Nobody? That means you either did a terrible job or a great job of your letter of intent. Um, <laughs> I suspect it's a great job. Uh, David, could you leave the meeting for now and we'll just go ahead and vote on this? I will do that. Thank you. Okay, okay. I will send you an email um, okay. right after this to invite you back in. All right. Okay, thanks. All right. Thank you. Um, okay, well, not much discussion. Anybody have any further discussion of uh, uh, David's application? Okay, then uh, would everybody please vote? And like I said, I'm squinting at my screen right now because I, I barely have a screen. Um, so everybody, please raise your hand uh, to vote for David for membership, alternative membership. And that will be, looks like everybody. So the uh, vote is unanimous for David to become a uh, alternate member of, of OSAC, which I think is great um, to pull him in on board. Hey, uh, one thing I wanted to mention um, while, while David's out of this, uh, David, and I've mentioned this to uh, David already, David's an attorney, of course, as you read. Uh, we are not allowed to get uh, legal advice from him in the committee. Well, our legal advice has to come from Jeff Parker, our uh, city attorney. Jeff, um, it's, a, it's a line that uh, uh, Jeff will have to, or Jeff, uh, David will have to learn to walk. Of, he can give us information, legal information, but he can't in any way act as our attorney. Um, and 
you know, I, I, I remember um, uh, Mike Mayo walking that line somewhat and, and seeing that happen before. Okay, um, now, I don't know. Are you going to invite him back? That's what I'm doing. Okay, he has been invited. So we'll see if he joins. Um, the next item is approval of the minutes. And we have no draft uh, minutes available at this time. That seems to be uh, seems to be happening now, happening now and then. And then I'm not being critical. I'm just curious why that's a problem these days. Any idea, Jillian? Or that's not probably out of your uh, hands. I, it is, but I can look into it and see if there's anything we can do to to expedite the minutes for next time. Yeah, it's probably a, a, a staff problem of some kind, you know, maybe somebody's coming in new or whatever. Um, okay, uh, we will continue on there. Um, Oh, I wanted to mention, uh, I, I talked to Jillian about this, and we're going to see if we can make this work. Um, Jillian had started uh, submitting a uh, director's report, which was great, um, except it tended to be the, the same um, agenda as we have in OSAC. So we ended up dealing with a bunch of stuff out of order um, in the, out of order from, from, uh, OSAC in the director's report, and then we go back over the same things in in OSAC as we went through through the OSAC agenda. So we're going to try to integrate Jillian's director's comments into OSAC's um, agenda and leave room for uh, uh, Jillian to make comments at the end. So just wanted to mention that we were doing that. Um, does anybody have any comments? Uh, next is item is reports. Does anybody have any comments on the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board? Um, okay, then we'll move right along. Did we want to see if anybody wanted to make public comment? Thank you. Where were the public comments? How did I miss that? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, gender review and public comment. That's interesting. Okay. Um, so yes, if anybody, if there's anybody that wants to make public comments that is that are items that are not included in the agenda, uh, can we please see a hand if anybody is looking to do that? Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Oh, okay. Corey from Medicine Wheel. Yeah. Go ahead, Hi. Corey. Yeah, uh, sorry if it's a bit loud. I'm just out on a bike ride. Uh, I was out on the Inaman Trail today and noticed there's some uh, trees that are broken off. And um, I recall as Medicine Wheel, we've had an agreement with OSAC in the past uh, where we would do some minor maintenance on the trail. Uh, we called it our trail agent program. And I just wanted to double check it was okay with everyone. I was going to take a folding saw and go do some uh, repairs on some damaged trees that got put down recently. Well, it's certainly okay, but with me, uh, does anybody have any thoughts, further thoughts about that? Now, one thing I'd say, Corey, Corey is, that, sorry, go ahead, uh, Nancy. I was just wondering if Jillian had any thoughts, since we have an arborist, we're not stepping on anyone's toes. Good point. I will tell you, Matthew can take all the help he can get right now, especially with with trees along the trail system. Corey, did these trees just fall over from recent wind and snowstorms, or what was their, their origin of falling? That's what a lot of them look like to me, although I wasn't there when they fell. Um, and I'll, I'll <laughs> okay. be happy to docu document with some before and after photos just to keep everyone on the same page. 
Yeah, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, one thing is that, uh, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, uh, we're going to have uh, Remfi doing some work, possibly doing some work. We've still we've got, got a lot of walls in the air as far well as uh, trail work goes, but, uh, um, and they're looking to take down a, and I seriously doubt if you're going to get to the top of Red Mountain to do this, but um, they're looking to take one of our trees that has been topped, broken off at the top, and using a pretty healthy, you know, maybe something six, eight inches or more in diameter to take that down and use that as part of the uh, remediation on the uh top of the trail up there where we go around that cliff and they're going to use a long log uh, like that to uh, to push up against, set up against the uh, the trail to give it a little bit of width, more width down there. So don't take everything. Okay, got it. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, anybody else have any comments on that? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Corey. Um, did anybody oh, say? Yeah, Cheryl. Did anybody make notice that we're meet or take note that we're meeting on Earth Day? I just thought that, that was fun. <laughs> uh, nobody has yet, but you did, and thank you. <laughs> Another thing I heard on NPR today is that if we turned off our photo, uh, you know, the video on the Zoom meetings, it would save 96% of our carbon print of our meeting. But I don't think we want to do that. <laughs> I don't think we want to either. Um, no. I think, but just I think. so you know, for other meetings that you might have that you can get by without seeing each other. <laughs> I'm just guessing that driving down to join a meeting would probably burn up uh, at least as much yeah. we're burning up now. It was amazing, though, that they said that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks, everyone. Um, moving on. And and uh, Andrea, thanks for noticing that. I'm going to skip right over that. Okay, so we've got uh, approval of minutes from Parab. Um, moving on to old business, since we have no new business. And this is really kind of a interesting story, and I want to bring Dan New into it a little bit. Um, like I said, Judy can't be here, but at our last meeting, uh, Judy brought up the, the issue of what was going on over at, uh, uh, at Rainbow Falls, and um, we brought up the concept that uh, Danu had been wanting to build a trail up there. I don't, we're not going to deal with that, the trail build, building up there right now in detail. Uh, we just don't have enough information. Um, I didn't have a chance to get all that together, but we're going to pull Danu in in a second anyway on Fields Park. So, Danu, are you there? Are you muted? She's here. Is she muted? Nope. Danu, will you try to? Oh. oh. Okay, I'm here. There you are. Hey, Danu. How you doing? Oh, hi. I'm good. Thank you. Great. Well, look. Uh, um, like I was saying, uh, Judy Karnak had brought up in our last meeting, she talked a lot about uh, the Rainbow Falls issue and all that kind of stuff. And then you and I went for a great hike up there um, trying to figure out, or you were really um, pointing out to me how we might uh, develop a, a trail up there. And I am not prepared to deal with that, talk about that tonight. I do want to um, see if we can get together with our uh, uh, planning director, our new planning director. What was his name again, um, Julian? So his name is Fred, and we actually had our new city engineer start today. Oh, okay. So, and we have our planning director and our city engineer 
they're both back in place. So we're pretty excited. Yeah, they're excited. probably drinking from the fire hose right now, uh, trying to come up with yeah. speed. But uh, those are two people that we want to get together. And at some point, I would like to uh, uh, come in and, and talk about the trail that um, Danu has in mind. It looked doable. Um, and as Nancy said uh, last time we were talking about this, a challenge, a technical challenge, but but doable and something we, we probably want to get on the boards for within the next couple of years anyway. Um, but Danu, I'm glad you're there because next thing we're going to talk about, we do want to pull you into. Yeah, go ahead. Can I just can I just bring up also we had talked about doing a low rise pedestrian bridge across Fountain Creek from mm -hmm. our property that would connect over to the Whales Tail property because there's no real legal way to access the other side of that creek unless we trespass on the uh, Manitou uh, bottling uh, property. So that might be something that well that might be something that would be a lot more easier to do. Which be which would be to start, you know, looking into getting some engineering done for a low-rise pedestrian bridge, just to get us across the creek so we could access the other side, city property. So I think that yeah. would probably come a lot sooner than than the trail. Maybe if 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 you. I'm not. I'm right not there. sure that's an OSAC uh, uh, project. Mm -hmm. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure it isn't an OSAC project. Well, it would be well, it would be part of the creek walk, you know. And, and if if you needed some uh, right. buy-in from Para, by I'm sure there'd be people on Para would be interested to support that as well, as well as the community. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, the city would have to support it. Nancy, um, I, I have a question for Danu. Danu. Yes. Where are you at with the master plan for the Hickenbotham Flats area? Um, well, Jillian and I are working on a draft for the master plan for an RF uh, P, and um, so we're just we're just trying to iron out details and stuff. We basically um, approved the basic uh, outline of of the components that we'd like to see up there, mm -hmm. and. Uh, that will that will have to get refined as the overall proposal, and then we'll probably uh, put it out for bid for a master plan drawing, design drawing. Great. Okay. Thank you. Now, but it will revolve around the Seven Stone Karen that uh, just received a grant from the match uh, funds. The artist Manuel Pulido uh, submitted us a, a photograph of. of of what he wants to build out of some uh, big seven stones. And it would represent all of the indigenous tribes that were here back in the day. And, and I think what we're envisioning is that the theme of this park would be dedicated to the indigenous tribes and, and, and to the indige ind indigenous people, which yeah, might you, help with grants, you know, grants, yeah. Unless something changed radically since our last meeting, I serve on the match board. And I think we we funded that contingent on the master plan being done. That's correct. This yeah. month, I mean, this year, city yeah. city council approval for 2024. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay uh, yeah, Andrew. Oh, there we go. Uh, remind me, if anybody can, um, so it was my understanding that the master plan for that was sort of taking place at the same time as developing a master plan for this whole serpentine area. Can anybody straighten me out on that? Like, or where we're at with all that? <laughs> We've got a contract led to JR Engineering. Um, they submitted a proposal and that proposal was accepted which is uh, pretty complete. For uh, what? For the- That's for the creek walk, two- That's for the creek walk, phase six, serpentine. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't include Rainbow Falls. I mean, right, so I was, I'm, I'm talking about like the whole, um, you know, Higginbotham Flats, like connecting the trail down to creek walk. Hmm. 
no there's, wow. not, there's none of that yet. Oh, okay. That, that's, yep. I, I, was, I think, Andrea, you're referring to like when Skylar was on board, because that was the big master idea plan was, was to be able to connect a trail from a SERP 6, and it would connect up the, the whale's tail up to the park. So that's maybe is, is what you were talking about, because Skylar really thought that we could get a GOCO grant for that project. But uh, because of the scope and the enormity of it, Parab is going ahead to just kind of do what we can do within our our, our scope of, of, of work and getting a master plan for that area. And so I, I was just looking at some of my notes. I just have it set that there was some kind of serpentine master plan happening. And I remember Dole talking about it. Okay. That is, I think that is what uh, JR Engineering is doing. Is that correct, okay. uh, Julie? So the, so what I'm thinking of as a serpentine thing is the creek lock master, phase six master plan. Okay. Yeah, that is JR Engineering, I believe. That's, that's worth taking a look at just to, just to see how the big boys play when they're doing a trail. How they and manage, it's not just, yeah, it's, how may, they manage to spend $100,000 on a plan. <laughs> well, and it's not just Creek Walk. It's, it's, you know, it's the whole, it's the road. It's, you know, right. the development right. of that of Serpentine Drive. Um, it's not just Creek Walk. You that's, know. Where the, that's where the money is going. Right. There's a lot of the engineering on the It's road. a highway department thing and all that stuff has to be involved. Does it have a name like that project? It Serp does. Six. Serp, Serp Six is what Dan Hughes calls it. <laughs> what? I, I, I got that from Dole. <laughs> we just call it Phase Six or Phase Serp. That's but what we've been calling it. I don't think there's a formal name for it at this point. Yeah. Hey, it's a I... pretty impressive piece of engineering, though, if you read the JR engineering proposal, or at least it's com complicated enough to make you think, okay, that's worth the money. Um, okay, could, let's- Hey, Tim, could I just jump in real quick before- Of course uh, you can. While we're talking about, about uh, that whole creek walk area, you know, there's a natural trail that goes right along the uh, the creek there, right right below the, the, the formal creek walk that's being engineered or, or surveyed or, developed and what I would really love to do is is to be able to talk to your guy from Rimfi to get his take on what it would take to just clean that up and make it a little more uh passable around some of the terrain obstacles because that would be a really nice addition to the to the uh the proper official creek walk sidewalk and 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 to just be able to develop the natural trail that goes along the creek and that's all just throwing well, out ideas. We're we may be talking about that idea on uh, on the next uh, uh, topic. With uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. A, a little bit later on, we're going to talk about that with another project. Um, let's go ahead and get on to. Uh, okay, just to, just end that. We'll prepare something. Um, at least a high level, uh, Dan, you, you and me and whoever else we can drag in on that planning and whatever, just as a, at a high level of something that we might shoot at for the, uh, for the Higginbach um, to uh, Serpentine Drive um, trail, Higginbach down to Serpentine Drive trail. Okay, um, Fields Park, uh, Creek Walk, it's kind of a misleading name. It's Fields Park at the Creek. We know which uh, property we're talking about, but probably most people, if somebody can find a better name for that, that's fine. Come up with something. But uh, first of all, I, I took a look down there. Let me uh, pull something up on the, on the uh, packet. Flip down through here and tell everybody what page it's on. The first thing is the survey page, which we've seen before. 
and it's on page 12 of the packet. And we've got, uh, let's see, the, the guy's name is John Day. And what's the company that he works for, um, the, our sur surveyor? Do you remember? He works yeah, Drexel Barrel. Drexel Barrel, yeah. So they've started down there, but I don't think they're done yet. They were supposed to be done a couple of weeks ago. But I went down there today and looked at that, and they've got the... Uh, They've got the property line and corners marked on the what would be the north side of the property, but that just runs along the fence, so it's not not any big uh, um, surprise. The interesting thing is where the property lines are on the other side, the south side, and whether we own the creek or the land uh, on the creek. Um, so that we can do our uh, uh, cleanup, so that uh, Matthew can do his cleanup on that without worrying about trespassing on everybody's property. Hopefully that'll be done. Um, I'll, I've got a call in to, to John, so hopefully that'll be done and complete um, by the time Matthew wants to get in there in May. Um, The other thing I wanted to talk about, and on the next page is our uh, the Fields Park Creek Walk tasks, and that's changed a little bit. Um, the survey was supposed to be done by now, so I've marked that as done. Does everybody see what I'm talking about? Just that uh, little piece of uh, little piece of spreadsheet. Um, Okay, I, I'm assuming everybody does see it since nobody's saying no. Um, so the survey is supposed to be done and it's in process. Uh, the CSU land inspection uh, with uh, Derek Lowstuder was done, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit in a minute as well. And our arborist report. And the next thing to be done is uh, to clean up the property, remove the dead wood and stuff like that, and remove the fence. Um, what I would like to do is is change gears a little bit. We were talking about going uh, um, developing developing that property for ADU ADA accessibility. And when I started to think about that a lot more, it seemed like it was really outside of our wheelhouse. Um, for one thing, as we learned with the, uh, with the CSU report, um, the land report, it would take a heck of a lot of uh, effort um, and expertise to remediate the low-lying land in there that had been dug down and moved out. And, um, that was going to be quite quite a process. And then we'd have to lay, lay down a uh, hard surface uh, for the accessibility capability, which basically means concrete. And the whole process would have pulled us off into a whole different direction than is reasonable, I think, for OSAC to be taking on. Um, Danu, you still there? Yes, uh-huh. Okay, you walk, we walked down there together. Uh, what, was your, what were your thoughts on that? Um, I think that would make a great pocket park, really. And uh, I actually, Parab has been talking about trying to do an, a senior, um, senior adult fitness station that would that would be you know different kind of fitness uh, equipment for seniors or for whomever and that location would be a perfect place to have a, a fitness senior station set up there but um also I I think that the ADA piece of it I don't think it would really be uh, necessary only because the creek walk is right above. And that provides all the ADA access. I mean, we could put the, the senior fitness station close enough to the creek walk trail so that people could access it, uh, yeah. so that they so they wouldn't have to. 
Um, well, the, the big point with uh, Danu is that uh, you had said that um, uh, simply by doing the cleanup, not even worrying about cutting the weeds or anything like that, the pair of would be willing to accept that property. Is that correct? I would have to take that back to pair of and ask them and then <clears throat> take a vote, form a vote on that. But I'm, okay. I'm I don't think that they would be opposed. Okay. Okay. It's so yeah, 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 Nancy. Oh, I was just going to say um, two things. Number one, Danu, we, we heard a presentation from, um, I can't tell you who now, but, but of the, from the um, disc golf people who would like to put the holes they need to make a regular nine hole, I guess, course. Um, they would like to put that in there. And the other thing is that I know you guys have a goal of making parks ADA accessible, um, just like we have around some of these trails. And I think relative to that, this is one of the flattest places you know, you can find any place in our area where and our idea was just to give people in wheelchairs and that kind of thing access to the water, not just to see it, but actually safely get to it. So those are just a couple of considerations. I think, you know, if you guys accept the property, it's certainly for you to figure out, but that's, um, those are a couple of background pieces um, that you should know. Okay. Um, um, one of the things, yeah, go ahead, uh, Andrea. Oh, I, I actually uh, connected up uh, Matthew, oh, who approached us with the disc golf course idea for that property. And as you know, we already have a, a pra practice disc golf course, disc uh, frisbee course at uh, Fields. And we have quite a few baskets there. And that area is quite a bit larger than, than the... Uh, uh, the property that you folks just purchased. And then my other concern is it's so close to the creek, we'd have Frisbees flying into the creek. <laughs> at, at least at least where, where it is in fields, there's a buffer there. And uh -huh. uh, the, the concern of, of Frisbees going into the creek is still a, a reality, but less less or so. But I think there's already like maybe eight baskets existing at Fields Park. And they're really- I think, I think the idea was to, I think there's nine there and then nine more would make it a full 18 hole like most of the others are. Uh -huh. But yeah, all of your considerations are valid. So what I did is I I, I contacted the, the original folks who belong to the league. They have a Frisbee golf league. Uh, their locals here, Ben um, Englehart and Steve Mull. And they're the ones who installed all those baskets free of charge because they love doing it so much. And Parab just purchased all the baskets and, and they did all the work to install all the baskets. So I, I connected Matthew with uh, Steve Mall to talk about that aspect. Okay. And, because I've pretty much turned it all over to Steve because I kind of see this golf as his, his baby, his purview, his expertise. Yeah, so. I, I think that's the appropriate place for it to be is in is Parab to make that decision after we turn the property over to you. Uh, do, you do you folks have any strong feelings about that? Yeah, Andrea. I think you're muted, Andrea. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so I am wondering, so we're talking about now changing the designation from open space to parks is that what you mean okay. yes and then um i was just going to say that you know part of us our consideration of purchasing that was just that that is open space you know and that it would you know maintain some kind of natural character people's access to that is also important so i mean i think parab values that also yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, yeah, I guess, I mean, we could we could take it out as a pocket park and just leave it natural. We don't have to do anything with that property, really. Yeah, I think that would be best. Um, as far as the, the Frisbee golf thing, um, <clears throat> that's a small area. It's a small width. 
It's uh, an average 100 feet across there. Um, you're going to end up with, you're definitely going to end up with frisbees in the, uh, in the creek. And then you're going to end up with people going on to private property to retrieve their frisbees. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we have, we have uh, a couple of neighbors anyway that aren't going to be real happy with us if we do that. So that's a consideration. But uh, the good thing is we can throw that over on Danu. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know some of the feedback that we we have had from our existing frisbee golf course is that uh pedestrians walking by have to be really careful not to get hit right flying frisbees right. and yep. then early on when when we first started there was a, a couple residents who were really upset because they couldn't walk their dogs in the in the grassy field area because of all the frisbees flying around but uh I haven't heard much from them lately, so I, I guess they've worked it out because yeah. as I as I pointed out, our parks are for everybody to use and that we have to share and give and take. And and we can't just you know cater to just one one the loudest voice that I'm not a frisbee guy, but I'm I imagine that uh frisbees that's a that's a bicycle corridor right, running right next to that. And I imagine that Frisbee is coming out of your line of sight um, would be a little disturbing on a bicycle if you were going any speed at all. But I don't know. I'm not a Frisbee person. And, and I'm certainly happy to leave that up to Parks and Rec. Um, well, and we are doing, so City of Colorado Springs, they have the Cottonwood Creek Disc Golf Course that is right on Cottonwood Creek Trail, which I would argue is one of the busiest urban trails in the region. Okay. They have minimal conflicts between the disc golfers and um, bikers, pedestrians, dog walkers, etc. It might be the design of the course, but I wouldn't be too concerned about user conflicts. Um, the Frisbee golf community, they're they're pretty well behaved as far as user groups go, at least in my experience. Um, but it's something that we're we're in talks with Colorado Springs to learn more about how to manage that interface. But okay, that's great. definitely a valid point. Okay. Well, the question I think we have now is uh, whether we're going to turn this over to Parks and Rec. And Parks and Rec can then make that decision. Um, does anybody have any strong feelings against turning this over to Parkinson's and Rec? It seems to be the right fit. So, yeah, Nancy. Yeah, this is definitely not against it. I'm, I'm totally for it, but just by way of background, you know, uh, preserving in terms of acquisition, you know, why we bought it in the, the first place is, you know, preserving riparian areas is in uh, part of our list of um, acquisition cri criteria from the post plan. And so I think that was our thought in purchasing that property is the first thing was, let's preserve this, you know, riparian area that's also right. on the Creek Walk Trail. Um, knowing full well that it's very small under our our open space standards, um, that kind of thing, and and knowing that you know it probably is you know, you know thinking about the maintenance of it. So we have bought it now, but um, the type of maintenance, all those kinds of things are are kind of better handled by parks because it's we're used to dealing with much larger pieces of property. So um, yeah. That was just the thought is that it's, you know, better suited to uh, to a park type of space, whether it be really natural or whether it be more developed. Um, I think we were, like you said, Tim, maybe hoping that it would be more natural, but we also had a lot of discussion about wanting to make to make it ADA accessible too, or an opportunity to make things. ADA accessible, but otherwise, yeah. And it by by it not being our space, it really enrolls a lot of other resources. I think um, that are part of parks and park maintenance and all that kind of thing. So, okay. if Parab will accept it, I'd be 
totally good with that. Okay. Um, do you think we should uh, take a vote on this? Do Probably. we need to take a vote on it? Okay. Um, so can I hear um, a proposal for that vote? Sure. I would move that we uh, donate the property at um, Fields Park Creek Walk area. What's the acreage, Tim? It's one acre. At one acre. 1.5, um, 1.05 acres. 1.05 acres to Manitou Springs Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Um, should they accept it? Should okay. we say that we want to rezone it? Not just, it's like, I mean, isn't that what we technically would be doing? Who was that? Shouldn't we say that we want to rezone it or just like approve? Yeah, actually, I don't think we have, have it zoned uh, an open space at this point. So whatever we're rezoning it to, we can skip the open space part and just rezone it to the Parks and Rec. Well, this is really good timing because it's on the city council agenda for May 7th, the next council meeting. It is slated to be zoned as open space. So now would be the time to let council know that we're aiming to zone it as a park instead. Good, good. Okay, do we see here a second on the motion? I second it. Thank you. Um, is there any more uh, discussion? Then why don't we take a vote on passing the motion? All in favor, raise your hand. That's one, two, three, four, five. It looks like that's unanimous. Motion passes unanimously. That's great. Um, thank you, Danu. And and yeah, if we we need to get together and talk about your uh, your grand plan out there on Higginbottom Fox. In the trail. Okay. There's plenty, plenty of time, Tim. <laughs> yeah, there, believe me, there is plenty of time on that one. Yeah. Um, the next thing coming up, let me just make sure I'm hitting everything here. Yeah. Okay. Um, is the Bill Bauer Trail. And um, Let's see, we met uh, last week, was it, with uh, Matthew and, and uh, uh, Woody, Carl Woody, yeah, last week, um, to have Matthew and Carl Woody get together and talk about how much cleanup was necessary in order for Carl Woody to get down in there and, uh, and uh, do the alignment for the uh, for the multi-use trail. And during that meeting, um, Carl and Nancy and the rest of us had a bit of a conversation about some other possibilities. And Nancy, why don't you go ahead and discuss okay. that? Well, I think about including Jillian and Brad and there were six or seven or eight of us who whacked our way down from the top and it really was bushwhacking <laughs> and it really um you know it's a it's such an interesting piece of property but it was really interesting to walk walk it with uh, carl from rimfi because right away as we were starting he was starting to look at seriously a trail alignment and that kind of thing a sustainable trail there would involve you know getting well up away from the creek um along you know a couple of the steeper banks on on either side of the creek it would actually kind of start on on the um east side and then at some point traverse the creek and be on the west side and you know there's some there's some really cool things you know everything from um red rock you know boulder configurations kind of thing to um you know dense forest but it is very very dense and there wasn't much evidence. There was evidence of a couple social trails coming down, uh, straight down to the creek from the park, but there wasn't evidence, strong evidence of people using that as a trail, as a social trail to get down to um, Crystal Park Road yet. So um, the thought that I threw out there is, uh, um, I've always been interested in that property in terms of a safe routes to school grant, 
because there are, I've, I've heard several times from people up in that neighborhood that, that, you know, having their kids go down to Crystal Park Road and along Crystal Park Road um, from Sutherland or from any of those roads there to get to school, it, it's the Crystal Park Road part that is so dangerous and doesn't have sidewalks. It has that uh, blind curve and everything else. And that, you know, people would be really uh, excited to have their kids walk or ride their bikes another way that would put them out on the sidewalk and then there'd be a traffic light and all that kind of stuff. But there was no evidence of, of anybody doing that. And it's un after walking it, I can see why, because like I say, we were bushwhacking through. So the thought was maybe we don't talk about putting in a permanent trail. Um, Carl agreed it would be expensive. It wouldn't be just, uh, you know, improving a social trail or something like that. It would be a fairly expensive trail for us to build right now. And maybe a better approach would be um, what Julian named a, phase, a phased approach, which I thought was a good idea. And that is we start just by doing some simple corridor clearing um, kind of along the creek um, in an area that as, if, as you walk it, you can kind of see, well, these are some natural social trail kind of routes. They wouldn't be sustainable necessarily because probably most of it would be relatively close to the creek. Um, but nevertheless, it could be a nice footpath kind of thing. And do that first and just kind of see what kind of um, use we get. And the other thing is in order to be to build the kind of trail we're really talking about, we probably have to have a couple community meetings about this because this does traverse a section where there are homes on either side up on the edge of the little, whatever you wanna call it, arroyo or valley or whatever through there. So it would be a fairly intense uh, project to go in there and build a big, you know, sustainable trail at this point why not uh, build a navigable footpath and just see if the early er, you know, area people start using it um, as an access. We need some of that data if we were to write a safe routes to school grant anyway. So that was the thought. And I guess the other thing, it, just from a big picture point of view, and that's gonna be, um, also on our agenda is we've got a lot of big fish to fry in terms of Black Canyon and some of those other things. So, um, I mean, I guess it's, and, and, and including, uh, you know, trail maintenance on Iron Mountain and Red Mountain. So anyway, that was the thought is kind of um, get in there, do some cleaning, make it possible for somebody to, to um, walk through there without poking their eye out for the most part. And then, um, let it ride for a while and see what happens. Yeah, and this wouldn't necessarily be the final trail alignment at all. Right. We'll see. Um, one of the things that I believe you guys were talking about is the possibility of getting a, a go go grant or, or a safe access to schools grant. And in order to do that, we need some metrics about how that trail was being used. Uh, currently, and that would give us the opportunity to get those metrics. And uh, uh, if we decided that the multi-use trail was the way that we needed to go, then that would give us a little bit of help with uh, with um, financing that. Um, anybody else have? Well, the only other thing I'd say? add is, and I'm is that our arborist said there's not there's not a huge, there's not a big number of dangerous trees in that area that he didn't think it would be too hard for them to clean it up. Right. So, and I think the, the other corridor clearing could actually be done, um, you know, with OSAC and volunteers on a work day kind yeah. of thing. TJ, what do you think? There we go. I'm trying to find a way to unmute myself. Um, well, I was a big proponent of of using this um, this purchase for connectivity down from 
from the top of this Crystal Hills area. Um, because yeah, on Crystal, what is that? Crystal Hills Boulevard down there, there are no sidewalks whatsoever coming down next to the um, the highway or anything. So it'd be a great thing to do. But these are all very good points about getting some metrics in there, starting off a little easy. The only thing that I'm a little concerned about is when we um, when we do this work to put in a trail um, here in the West, these trails, if we decide to do a new realignment, they don't heal very quickly. And so the temporary alignment might not be so temporary. So we just, if we go ahead with that, we might want to keep that in mind a little bit. Okay. Um, one, one thing I'd like to say about the, uh, the safety of coming down <coughs> Crystal Hills Boulevard, I've, I've walked that, I've pedaled it and everything else. Um, I agree that it's not very safe right now. I had had a talk with, um, and, and Dole had set me up with a, um, really nice guy. Um, I think our, the, our mobility director, Juan Alvarez, and I met him and, uh, two of the, his other uh, co-workers uh, down at the bottom of that hill and suggested that we put a uh, uh, slow lane trail up on the, what would be the west side of the uh, of Crystal Hills Boulevard. And that could be used either for pedestrians or for bicycles going up the hill. And bicycles going down the hill are already, it already says, that it's a, uh, a mixed use um, road up there. There's a sign up there saying exactly that. And bicycles going down that hill can just pull out in traffic like you're supposed to do in a situation like that. And they're gonna be going the 20 miles an hour anyway down that hill on a bicycle. So it's it's perfectly safe in on the downhill lane um, and then we'd have an uphill lane for uh, pedestrians and uphill bicyclists. It seemed like a reasonable solution. I was thinking actually of that for the road bikes, uh, being able to come up that safely with a road bike and for pedestrians to come up there safely. So it isn't a, a uh, replacement of the potential mountain bike trail down through uh, uh, down through the canyon there, but it is a uh, it is a way of of conveying on bicycles safely, and hopefully they're going to do that uh, this summer. They're going to start. What if people? That. But what if people want to ride their bicycles on a natural trail like that? I mean, right, right. That is a well, thing. That is the thing, and um, yeah, say a little bit more about that. Oh, uh, David. Nancy, what was the discussion at the pinch point? Uh, there wasn't much of a discussion at the pinch point other than um, trying to know exactly where it was. Um, and everybody agreed it was, you know, a pinch point, but but that you could make it navigable, navigable, if that's a word. I don't know. Tim, do you recall? Yeah, um, we talked about that a little bit um, when I was when we were down there, and the pinch point happens to be right where that rock is, right where that big, beautiful, interesting um, sandstone rock is. Uh, hopefully, um, uh, Mr. Rose is going to give us a an, an easement on the other side of the creek. So that we'll have another uh, 20, 30 feet um, to work with on the other side of the creek. Otherwise, what you have to do is you have to go above that rock. And that's going, that's going to be difficult. Well, at that really pinch point, you can't do that because you've only got 20 feet, 25 feet at that point. So we really need to get that um, easement on the other side. That's not true. For a walkway, a pathway, walking, you can certainly make do with that. But for a uh, five-foot-wide uh, multi-use trail, um, it would be a tough squeeze to get through there. I don't. We don't have a solution, is what I'm telling you, except that we're we're dependent upon the kindness of others. Because you'd really hit TJ's concerns if you're above that sandstone rock 
you're on a steep slope and anything you do is permanent there. I mean, I, I sure hear that comment. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm coming in uh, from, Tim and I walked this uh, several months ago. Uh, I think it was like late last year. And uh, yeah, I mean, you're not going to win any any uh, fans in the neighborhood if you decide to try to blast through any of that fountain sandstone that's uh, down there to make a, make a trail. But with uh, a lot of our trail systems now, especially in order to make them multi-use, sometimes we might not have them specifically five feet wide in all respects. You know, right. we have to deal with what nature gives us in that and on that property. And so we, I'm sure that we'll find a way to work together with our user groups in order to make it worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. One, yeah. Of, one of the things that I had mentioned to uh, Carl in an email was that we had a, a lot of the point in having a bicycle route down through there was uh, for kids um, on their way to school. And yeah, we would <laughs> we would really we would really need to look out for safety down there. The uh, the slope down through there just on a straight line basis is 8.7 percent. But that 8.7 percent isn't consistent. There are going to be areas through there where it's probably closer to 10 or 12 percent. And at that point, you need places where people can pull over. Um, and get out of the way uh, where you can come to a stop if you're going downhill. And that's a that's the kind of challenge I imagine Remfi faces all the time as a matter of course. But I just wanted to make sure that they were very aware with that with the uh, with the alignment. Um, so these are things that we're just talking about right now. Um, uh, Remfi isn't uh, on the hook to get down there at any particular time, um, just whenever we turn them loose. So, uh, Corey, I imagine you have some comments on this? Um, th thanks. I'm listening with interest. Um, I, I heard anything that contradicts what, what we saw when we went out there and looked at it. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't think we need to vote on any, well, maybe we do. I mean, we're getting to the point where we want to turn, uh, Remfi loose on that. Yeah, Nancy. Yeah, I think from one thing, I do really appreciate what, what, um, TJ saying. And I, I thought the same thing. I mean, I asked myself the same thing, but it's so kind of dense through there, um, I think if, if we put in the kind of trail that, that Rimfi is talking about right now, up, up well on the ledge, which would have to be a fairly, um, it might even have to be reinforced in some places, um, you would still inevitably find people wanting to find their way down to the creek. It's right. just the, nat the nature of water. So I think, you know, rather than, than fight that urge, in something like that, we we acknowledge that there will be places where people want to get down to the creek, especially when it's running. Um, I don't know. I see two two maybe three air things right now to be done. One is nothing, and urge um, OSAC members and other people in the neighborhood and others to get out there and walk <laughs> walk that uh, you know creek walk that piece of property and see what you think in terms of doing something. The other thing is clearly we can look up, you know, we can ask Rimfi what they would charge us to do a complete alignment, a sustainable trail, trail alignment through there. Um, or three, we could do uh, what I talked about in terms of doing a little corridor clearing um, and kind of seeing for ourselves what what that would and i don't think we need to vote on any of those right now but i would like some more feedback from everybody about it um and and you know talk to your neighbors i mean especially people who love live up there at the top you know is it something that they they foresee using and and uh allowing their kids to use and some of those kinds of things 
know, yeah, I would. Uh, I wish uh, um, Robin was here. We could talk a little bit more about what she's yeah, doing. Yeah, about community meetings would be great. Community outreach, yeah. Um, one, oh, yeah, one thing that I would like to note, though, is that uh, of all your um, your proposals, Nancy, I see a lot of danger in just inviting the, without any um, guardrails right. out there, inviting the general public into there. It may, uh, we may have conflict between those people and the landowners around them right now, and it may not work in our favor for garnering support. Um, yeah. Of all the things that you suggested, I think that, you know, at least taking a nibble out of it and doing some corridor clearing and opening it up and making it a little more accessible might whet some people's appetites to continue the project a little bit more, too. And so I'm yeah. mostly in favor okay. of that method. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Andrea. Um, yeah, I, I also like what Nancy's saying, too, but um, I think we need a structured way to do that somehow. Like, just we need, like, feedback, like... How are we going to do that? <laughs> you know, like how are we going to collect that information? Like what specifically is helpful? Because I feel I, I've been through down through there just once and I'm like, I, I mean, what I'm not even sure what I would say. You know, it's like, yeah, I think you could probably put a trail here or there. But it's like without without like a plan, which I think we decided we're paying Rimfi to do a, a trail layout plan. So, right. Yeah, or they, yeah. they have agreed to do that. Um yeah, like I, I would like to see what they come up with for that versus just, uh, yeah, I'm I'm a little I, I I'm looking for some structure, <laughs> like for how to collect feedback, I guess. Okay, um, yeah, I hear what you're saying. If we just put a uh, if we just put a path down through there, which is what Nancy's talking about. Um, a structured path of some kind, which I think we do need. I agree with TJ. We at least need that. We we don't want to just throw people down in there right now. <laughs> it's a bit of a uh, bushwhack. It's not a bit of a bushwhack. It is a bushwhack. Um, but uh, I can see doing the path and doing um, having Remfi do an alignment down there and marking it to the degree that people can see what the other trail would look like. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, but, yeah. And Remfia Rem says, says they're gonna do it for free. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, but well, I, you I, just- I, Steve, Steve, sorry. Go ahead, Steve. I'm hearing two things. I'm hearing one, Remfia's path, which would be not necessarily by the creek, and I'm hearing clear a corridor so people can hike down by the creek. I think we should mm -hmm. center on one thing. We should say, okay, Rimfi's going to propose the path. And I think we should just go with that rather than, you know, have some vague concept of, oh, well, we'll clear a corridor and see where people go down by the creek or whatever, see how people right. use I, it. So, I think we're saying the same thing, Steve, is that the, the path down by the creek could be done by uh, Remfi, could be uh, lined out by De Remfi, and then uh, OSAC and volunteers. But is that what they're proposing? Is that what they're proposing? I didn't hear that they're proposing that. No. Um, I, I don't no, think right we know now, what they Right proposed. now, we've asked them to do an alignment for a multi-use trail down there, okay? But they are, have said that they're willing to um, do an alignment just for a uh, just for a path down there as well. So that might be what we do. Go ahead and do Nancy. I'm sorry. I didn't Nancy. hear. I didn't hear that from Rimfi at all. You um, didn't hear what? That they were they were willing to do a path alignment. Um, I think at, at the sure. point we started talking about um, not doing a sustainable trail alignment that was the end of their part of the conversation. I don't think that they, mm -hmm. I think they would only want to put their reputation on a sustainable trail alignment. Yeah, I, think, so, I think I would go with that. Yeah, yeah. So we either do that. I mean, that could go to Andrea's point in terms of planning, that could be our next step. You know, we have Rimby, Rimfi under contract. Um, I don't know if it could be done this year, but um, in terms of how much, you know, we have contract with them for three weeks a year, 
and they're already they already have a good chunk of that time that will be taken up with the with the stair the mm-hmm. new stair is going up iron mountain so anyway um but we could we could hold off there's no rush and wait for rimfi to do a regular sustainable trail alignment whether they mm-hmm. start this year or do it next year um and that way the we, we, neighborhood would have something to react to you know right. but I, think we, I think we ought to also do the path down by the water so that people can get down in there and see what we're talking about and hopefully we can by having the trail marked they can see where a, a multi-use trail would be as well I don't see well any. and I think the the multi the trail that the alignment at least as um Carl and I were walking it you know there are definitely there will be places where the trail comes down one place especially where it's got to cross the river or the creek um so I I really hear what TJ is saying about creating something down there that we're not going to use and isn't part of a sustainable trail alignment um I think we should now I've kind of changed my mind I think we should wait and get a sustainable trail Mm -hmm. alignment and see how much of it is by the river you know well, and ideally, like if we start like the corridor clearing, that should at least help some with visualizing it and yeah. some intro. But are you saying we should only do corridor clearing or along the alignment? Ooh, that's a tough one. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, TJ, is that is? what you were saying that we should only? Um, yeah, what I was saying is, you know, we want to try to keep uh, the impact to the to the terrain and the environment there minimal um, until we know exactly where where that trail is. And so I'm not saying like bring it down to the creek um, right away. Um, the creek actually for me is not of any sort of consideration right now, or at least not a major one. But uh, you know, having that connectivity is really where I was coming from. So. You know, if we can, if you're going to do some corridor clearing, have it at least in the likely areas, and that might actually help guide Rimfi and get them, you know, a little better look at what they're going to be dealing with as a as a final alignment too, and help refine the process. Okay, but you're not in favor of putting a path, a footpath in down there closer to the creek. Is that correct? It doesn't necessarily have to be close to the creek. It may be close. It might not be close, but it's where it would make more, you know, the most sense for uh, for connectivity to get down to, um, you know, towards the overpass down there. So I don't know. It's a it's it's not an easy call. Um, and yeah, with corridor clearing, if we're not if we're not putting in tread, um, the tread is going to be a lot more destructive or at least a lot more permanent to the uh, environment than just some corridor clearing. Because looking down there, it's mostly mountain mahogany, a lot of a lot of scrub oak in those areas around those rocks and stuff. And that stuff tends to bounce back pretty quickly within five or so years uh, of that. We just want to make sure that we're not causing another problem like we have in Red Rock Canyon, which you have renegade trails that go off in all sorts of different directions and then people just keep using them forever um, when when the alignments are being uh, redone. And so I know that Red Rock Canyon has spent, um, there's been a lot of money put in there on closing those renegade trails um, all over the place. So, I mean, if we can avoid laying them out in the first place, that would be better. Mm. Okay, well, you've got a solid decision on that. Um, <laughs> we're going to be in a position where we need to either um, turn REM feed loose on uh, doing an alignment to multi-use alignment or uh, we're losing them for the year. <laughs> what do you think? Well, this, I'm just going to throw this out there. What about uh, a an OSAC work day where we all walk that trail again with our bloppers and clippers <laughs> and just sort of agree on what might be a, you know, what might be some corridor clearing. Cause it's all, 
it's, you know, the most you'd use at this point probably is a bow saw, you know, it's not a big deal, but you, but to get a lot of branches out of your way so you can just walk through there without. Yeah, that, that would make a difference. It'll make it easy, but uh, we're going to have the same problem that TJ is saying is that we're going to, we're going, we're probably going to succeed in getting people down there. But if we don't have an identified trail, then they're going to make up their own trail. Yeah. Maybe they'll identify it for us. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. But, you know, I like the idea with that Nancy has as well with the bow saws and the loppers and stuff like that. Like I said, <laughs> corridor clearing is a lot different than doing tread work. We're not bringing, you know, dirt moving equipment in there or anything like that. So. Yeah. It's much more temporary um, to do what she um, is proposing there. Okay, David, what do you think? Yeah, I'll I'll bring a saw. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but I guess I I had Andrew's question, which I thought Tim you answered, and that is, I thought we had an agreement with Rimfi they were going to do an alignment, at least make a proposal. I didn't think that was tentative at all. I thought that was agreed upon in January. That was agreed upon, and we're uh, kind of stepping back from that. Okay. But, you know, uh, to, to that point, David, I think we could go ahead and ask Remfi, I don't, I don't know if they'd find this offensive or not, to put an alignment down in there. Well, they shouldn't. We, they're putting in an alignment, and we're making a decision on whether or not we accept that alignment. That That's yeah. not out of the realm of... Uh, reason it's not but they should be clear on our expectations yeah right yeah right. the other big unknown is until we know if that landowner is going to give us that space we really have to figure out what we're doing through the pitch point right now that's all good, you could do is that's a good point um tight rope I, around the i haven't the contacted uh, larry rose recently but every time i do he says absolutely they're gonna give us that uh give us that space. And when I ask uh, when he plans on doing his uh, development of those those properties, which is when he'll give us that, uh, that land, he's, his answer is whenever I get around to it. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got that solidly nailed down. Um, okay, I like the idea of a work day down there. Should we uh, propose something? Well, because it'll have to be um, put out as a public meeting. Yeah, right. That means other people could show up, but that's that's okay. We're yeah, that's work. okay. Um, should we select a day? If we don't do this now, it's another month out. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's... I would just put out there too. I bet Medicine Wheel would be happy to host a work day like that. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see. Well, Nancy's our our bush saw leader. When uh, what what date, Nancy? <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, let's see. And Corey had his hand up. Corey, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Corey. Yeah, just on that point, if it would be helpful for you guys, you know, we could we could set up a, um, you know, registration and and publicize a trail of work day to do corridor clearing on that. If uh, if you guys wanted that to happen. Okay, let us think about that, Corey. I'm not sure how many people we want to get down in there right now. Yeah, yeah I'm just nervous. About too many people. Yeah, I, I, I think right now we're we don't. It's uh, it's so overgrown and everything like that. I think we want to go down there with a pretty limited crew. If we want to know, yeah, um, I could do it. Just about any time starting um, the first of May. Okay, how about um, Saturday, May eighteenth. Works for me right now. At um, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. 
Danu, can you make that? <laughs> oh, she doesn't. That that's not Park's problem. No, I know. I know. <laughs> I I I I I don't know. I, I have to check my calendar. Okay. I, I could bring donuts or something for you. If I I'm, I'm just kidding. I know how yeah. much you like getting up early. Um, You're right, right. Okay, so uh, nine o'clock. Saturday, uh, May eighteenth at nine. And we meet at Bill Bauer Park, and it's a OSAC work day. And you know, we'll post it, and any public that wants to come can come. But right, since it's kind of our first walk through, you know, <laughs> walk through with clippers, we'll see. And uh, call it uh, nine. We to do 12. need like waivers and all that. Like it's, I mean, if it's just yeah. us, we don't. If it's a, oh, if, you, but you want, you're saying not the public or with the public? Yeah, no, I'm saying we won't formally invite the public, but because we have to post it as a meeting, the public can show up if they want. You know what I mean? And and usually what happens is nobody but shows. Wouldn't up. they still need waivers and everything? I don't think so if it's us. We need to sign waivers for that, I think. I, I don't we I don't know. Joanne, have, that's a question for you. Yes, we would want waivers. Uh, and that's something we can print out and have available. And I'd also like Brad or Josh, our parks maintenance team, to to Great. be there. Um, so I'll make sure to get them the date, May 18th. So I'll, it's I'll a let Saturday. them know. And yeah, Great. we'd be happy to have medicine wheel people down down there. But no time. picks, no McLeods, no, only yeah, corridor no clearing light. equipment. <laughs> so are you inviting Medwheel to do that or not? Um, Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Do we want uh Well, I'm just officially... saying you should be clear because, you know, they have tools and all the things. They will bring them and, like, organize a work day for yeah. us. I don't yeah, think I'm, we're I'm, ready I'm, yet. I don't think we're ready for that yet. Yeah. Uh, but okay. there, you know, I would you say and Corey are maybe you know, welcome to uh, come along. Hold on. Just Steve, Steve, maybe you know, like Friends of the Peak could we could maybe use their tools if that okay. Mm. Again, I we're we're just we're just doing um um advanced pruning. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's gotta yeah. have lop loppers or hand loppers or a little bow saw or a yeah a little a little hand saw that kind of stuff um and we'll see how far we get with that and it'll give us a chance to make up our mind about the next step okay we got that and uh julie jillian you're you're providing the waivers and stuff right Yes, and unfortunately and I can't be there that day, but I'll make sure that either Brad or Josh okay. is there. Okay. Great. Well, and this, yeah, they probably have loppers and some of those things too. Tell them to load up the truck. Yeah, we do. Yeah, and we should be, and, and we'll be done by noon. Tell them, I know it's Saturday, so we won't take the whole day. Yeah, three hours down there, it's quite a bit of time. Yeah. You know, it's only point. 0.4 miles the way the way the crow flies, but uh, that's great. All right, let's move on. Good meeting, folks. All right, uh, Black Canyon. If we go over to The well, we didn't we did look at the Bill Bauer Park drawing, but everybody's looked at that anyway. I think. Uh, and if you skip down to that to the uh, West Side LLC property on uh, page sixteen, um, the only reason I put that in there is that uh, just to make sure everybody's familiar with it, and also to point out, and this isn't a big deal, but it's kind of a curiosity that the West Side LLC property includes these little little pieces of property on the other side of the road. And I remember uh, looking at the, um, the survey for Black Canyon and they showed that the Black Canyon Road where it goes by the West Side LLC property 
is actually not on the Colorado Springs right away. It's a little bit off of the right of way. I don't know what that means, if anything, or if that has anything to do with those little pieces of property out there, but it's a curiosity. Anyway, you can see from that the drawing from the plat um, and where uh, uh, the boulevard is down here, that it's really making the accessibility of this property um, enhanced. And especially the, the the very very steep access of Black Canyon. This is a great thing. Uh, Julian, do you know when we're closing on that? Uh, I don't know an exact date, but I know that's one of Denise's top priorities right now, and she's actively working with the the seller. Right, right. Um, I'm, I'm not sure actually now that I talk about it that we should actually be throwing that out that this property is uh, being purchased but uh, don't don't spread it around outside of um, OSAC for now. Uh, well the city council approved it. They approved it in an executive session. Oh <laughs> they didn't come out and vote on it. They did vote on it, but they voted on they, it as you do in an executive session. They voted. You can't, on, vote on, you can't vote on anything in executive session. They had to have come They out. came out of the executive session and voted to accept the uh, the, the deal that they had, they had lined out during the executive session. That's how that's done. So they did not name the property. Actually, they ended up naming the property too when they came out of executive session. Yeah, so it could be in we've the, been, it we, be we, in the we, paper. This we've week. been it could be in the paper. If it's in the paper, then don't worry about it. But anyway, um, it's great that we're getting that, and and as uh, Nancy said, uh, that's going to create a big bucket of work for us uh, into the summer and next year, uh, along with everything else we've got going. Okay. Uh, anybody else have any comments on that? I think it's fantastic. Just it's fantastic. It's, yeah, I think it's fantastic. Our dreams come true as far as having a, a trailhead and, and enough space for potentially some parking and maybe even bathrooms someday. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's another conversation, but yeah, it's great. Um, Okay, so the uh, Canyon Purchase, and then uh, Nancy, you were going to re review Section 6 of the uh, our goals. Right, and maybe even Section 7. So it's in your packet, and um, focus on land conservation efforts on valued areas, including, so anyway, just kind of an update. So I thought first to talk about really quickly, you know, some of our current acquisitions over the last two or three years. And, you know, we've bought a significant or some significant pieces of property, um, starting with the 31 acres off you pass trail across from the water treatment plant um, and the proposed fire, whatever that thing is, fire building, practice building, whatever it is. Um, and we haven't, we've never really discussed what to do with it, but we know we preserve that hillside there pretty well. And it is adjacent to the trail, to the Ute Pass Trail there. So we bought that and then we bought um, what we discussed tonight, the creek walk adjacent to Becker's Lane and, um, and the river there. That parcel, we bought the whale's tail on super on serpentine, which was a real partnership with the city. Um, we bought the well, we didn't buy it, but we got it through land dedication. The property at Cheyenne Village uh, by the creek, and that's really something that that Parab has taken over um, and really uh, shepherded that property. But the long story short is there that we we threw our land dedication in with Parab and the school district's land dedication in order to people give people access to the creek there um, by, Shan, by Cheyenne Village as that is developed. There'll be another pocket park there. Um, 
and then this 4.6 acres uh, Black Canyon property that we also purchased for 93,000 plus. So we've been purchasing property um, and we have looked at, you know, the visual character and biological and ecological work. Um, hey Nancy? Yeah. Include the uh, 35 acres that we bought up above uh, uh, U Trail. That's what I'm talking about. The ISO property? 31 acres, yeah. 31 acres, okay, okay. Yeah, that was the first one I mentioned. Okay. So anyway, um, so then when you go down to the, the action plan under goals, it's interesting. Uh, concentrate future acquisitions in four larger land acquisition areas in general. Now this is from the post plan and you know this will be revisable. Um, this is suggestions at those times. And I don't know really all the thoughts that went into this. So the general area north of Highway 24, so that I think people did have in mind the Black Canyon property. Also in mind, this idea that appears elsewhere in the plan, which is about um, someday having a ring, the Springs trail, a, a ring of trails that goes all the way around Colorado Springs. So. In that case, it's necessary to look land, at land north of 24 also. And then um, northwest of Iron Springs and, and um, property, so northwest of Iron Springs, I guess we're talking about, I don't know what we're talking about there. When I think northwest of Iron Springs, I think of the property, uh, the trailhead for West Intamin, that kind of thing. Maybe some of you well, that, that might include the Jenkins property if that ever Oh, comes. yeah, it might it might include the Jenkins property. a possibility. Right. And then south of Ruxton and south of the Cemetery High School. So that's what was suggested at that time. And then uh, that's it. So 6.2, identify and engage funding and implementation partners to improve the financial feasibility of large conservation projects. Well, none of those, these have been really large. The 30 acres um, or 31 acres off Ute Pass was such a bargain at like $1,000 an acre that we didn't need any partnerships. Um, but we have been partnering on Creek Walk and the Whale's Tail and Cheyenne um, and even this most recent partnership with Black Canyon, not so much in terms of money, but in terms of in-kind services, um, you know, everything from Denise uh, negotiating the, ter the terms of the purchase and uh, the city doing, uh, you know, various projects, looking at our trees and that kind of thing. So I think we, we always are open to improving our financial, you know, feasibility, especially if we came across a large project. Um, Six point three: Evaluate potential acquisitions based on updated criteria. So right now, our criteria is uh, view shed, habitat area, riparian areas, steep slopes, floodplain, zoning, community preference, and trail corridors. Not necessarily in that order. And one of the things, frankly, we have failed to do is put those eight items, those eight uh, acquisition criteria into a prioritized order. So that's something for the future that we should probably talk about. Now, because of the nature of our acquisitions, we're very um, opportunistic in terms of what actually um, comes available. Because of where we live, you know, we don't have large, tra large tracts of land often um, becoming available. Probably the most significant for us has been the purchase of the Black Canyon property a few years ago. Um, and that was done mostly with a GoCo grant, uh, which took a, a ton of work. But we don't, you know, we don't, haven't purchased a lot of great uh, big areas, our 31 acres, frankly, because they're just not available or, or available to us for any kind of reasonable price. Um, but I think we'll continue to keep our 
our eye out for that. And in the meantime, we should probably have a discussion about what we want that criteria to be in I have order. A quick question, Nancy. Uh huh. Are you documenting like this? I mean, you have, it's like, I hear you kind of talking through like these points, like how we're meeting these different goals or, you know, issues. Uh -huh. address. Are you documenting that? Well, it's in, it's in your packet. My comments about each of those isn't in. Isn't That's what I mean though. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think that would be valuable to like have, you know, so. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll do something like that. <laughs> um, yeah, you're right. It would be valuable, especially when we rewrite the master plan or update the master plan. Um, yep. So, uh, okay, 6.4. And I'm, I, I, please, I can't see your hands. So if anybody has questions or comments, I'd be happy to entertain them. 6.4. And this is something that we were doing when we divided, you know, the board into two areas, one around trails and one about land around land acquisition when Shannon was president. Um, which we kind of decided wasn't working, but I know some serious work was done about preparing a general listing of acquisition possibilities and update annually based on changing conditions. So, um, and it, it's also interesting that that's, a, you know, seen as a short-term plan and it's OSAC and staff. So I think certainly, Tim and a, and a lot of other people on the committee are always keeping their eye out for possible uh, purchases or acquisitions, that kind of thing. We still have never, I guess, decided on any of the small purchases that are zoned open space that we would want to pursue other than just sending letters to those owners. Um, and that's kind of everything I know about that. Well, um, one, th one thing I'd like to say about that, Nancy, Sure. It's just that uh, we wrote that document, um, the catalog of uh, open space, uh, small parcels and stuff like that, identified uh, a lot of possible uh, um, uh, small lots that we would like to go after uh, uh, based on consolidating the Red Mountain open space. And nobody cares. <laughs> uh huh. Um, right. Nobody's interested in it. Uh, you know, we've tried to get it. To, we've gotten it to, to uh, the city in a couple of forms, including planning, and it dies a quick death at those places. So, really, I, I think the the reality is that uh, we're we're opportunistic in the property that we go after, and and, and the reason that the, that that didn't get uh, traction with uh, Shannon is that it just doesn't make sense mm -hmm. to go out and say we would like this property and we would like this property and whatever because if those properties aren't available it doesn't mm -hmm. make sense. like we take we we grab things to say they become available right I think there are a couple of pieces of property in that list you know, there's there's two ways to look at it. There's there's buying it to do something with it, and then there's buying it to block something with it. And I there's a couple pieces of property there that might go that have developable land around them that might go a long ways to right. um, preventing that. And I'm thinking of a a little parcel that's up on the north side of the Intamin Trail coming down like by oh High Road or I can't think of I don't know the names of the streets up there but there's um there's a parcel up there that could be called view shed because it's uh, along the side of the mountain the south side of um Red Mountain in this case but okay. anyway but, yeah we're not going to talk about that not tonight better, yeah, but I don't think we should out of hand not consider any of that at some point well we had the point is we have considered that we we brought up quite a bit of information on it and nobody's uh shown much interest in pursuing those. right 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 okay but I think go ahead let's go ahead and get to yep having that about. document is valuable okay and then finally identify and pursue acquisitions or advocacy for projects of regional significance and we were able to do that in to some extent with the city of Colorado Springs regarding the Black Canyon um, 
uh, property that we just purchased. I mean, they were open and working with us and saying, you know, we don't want it. We want you to have it. And, and uh, I don't know what else went on, went on there, but at least, you know, we are cooperating with Colorado Springs and we're, I know, certainly willing to cooperate when it comes to trail connectivity and, and all of that kind of thing. The Creek Walk is going to, you know, hook up with the Midland Trail, et cetera, et cetera. So we're working on that. And then I realized there's no reason not to talk briefly about goal seven, which is um, identify and pursue small technical spots. And we've already done that. So those were all mentioned. I mean, the whale's tail, the, the, the Black Canyon for acres, um, the creek walk at Becker's, those are all small properties, but of technical significance um, that, that we've purchased. So I think we're, we're doing that. We can talk more about evaluating, you know, okay. and prioritizing how we want to do that. But. I think I, I think I want to move us along here. Nancy. Yep, that's it. I'm done. Because we're coming up on, uh, yeah, seven four or an hour and forty minutes. So yeah, thank you very much, Nancy. That's great, and we'll continue careening down through this next time. Um. So. Uh, on to uh, existing trail maintenance. Um, I want to say a couple of things about Red Mountain and Iron Mountain. And then Andrea is going to talk about uh, trail inventory and probably has a lot to say about Red Mountain and Iron Mountain too. First of all, Iron, uh, Red Mountain, we've decided, we haven't completely decided, but it's a possibility that we're going to get um, Remphi up on top of Red Mountain to try to solve the problem of that that uh, one section right near the top that's uh, a little dicey uh, as far as uh, most people's feelings. Um, they're going to do some work up there to widen that trail, which is really difficult to do because there's nothing to support widening it. They're actually looking at putting in a long log to add to the width of that trail and um, breaking out some uh, rock that's bulging out. Um, anyway, and, and putting some steps in um, just to make it possible to slow yourself down when you're coming down that, that side. And we've, we also talked about uh, uh, putting in a trail just up through the rocks, which I think is a great idea. The problem is that you almost have to take the one nice tree out of there to do that. And nobody seemed very willing to do that. Um, and the reason that we're looking for that with, uh, with Red Mountain for Remphi is that we've kind of switched. Uh, initially, we were going to um, have Remphi do uh, the, the washout up on Red Mountain, which is kind of a... Uh, uh, it's the the spur trail that comes from Oak. Let's see, Oak Valley uh, Road. That's not right. It's Oak something Road down to the Inman Trail, and there's a there's a steep road essentially that goes down there. It's washed out very badly, and we're we were going to have Remphi do that, but. It, it, turned out with conversations that uh, Remphi actually felt that we'd be better off uh, getting a mechanical contractor in there to do that. So we're, we're looking right now at, at putting out an RFP for that as quickly as possible. And we'll be looking for uh, um, a somebody with uh, um, excavation equipment to go down there and fix that. It's, it's a bit of a road job and, and that would probably be the best way to do that. Uh, so that's why we're looking at things to fill in for with Red Mountain. We're also looking at, we've got a, a problem in that we've got Mile High Youth Corps coming in. They were going to be working on um, the replacement of the stairs on Wildcat Gulch. But we right now we don't have anybody to supervise them. And that would be a disaster from a lot of points of view to have them come in without supervision. 
and work on that and those stairs, it's a bit of a technical problem and they really need somebody to show them what to do. So we're going to use, we're trying to figure out how to use REMFI to do that. And then there'll be some leftover time for REMFI. And that kind of brings us in. And Jillian, did you want to say anything about that as far as where we're at on, on making those stars align so that we can get REMFI on that? Yeah, I actually have a call with Philip tomorrow from Mile High Youth Corps to see if we can align their project date with uh, availability from Rimpy. So I'll have an update by tomorrow afternoon. Okay, thanks. Great. Um, and then we're we're going to look for for other projects and and to fill in because we've still got twenty thousand uh, dollars worth of hours. Um, with REMFI, and I don't think just supervising the Mile High Youth Corps work is going to do that. And so maybe we're going to use them on Red Mountain, or maybe we're going to do something on these other trail on the other trails that uh, uh, Andrea has put out an inventory of. Um, Andrea, you want to say anything about that? Uh <clears throat> Well, this is not an entirely updated uh, list. Um, I could, I'm gonna <laughs> edit based on just what you've been talking about this evening. Um, but uh, yeah, if you guys see things to be added in any of these sections, that would be awesome. Or if you happen to be hiking along and wanna nerd out and bring this with you, <laughs> um, just to try and keep track of things. But um, I'm gonna, I, hopefully meet with Brad relatively soon in some format. Um, and we're going to try and touch base on this list as well. So. Okay. All right. Great. Nancy. Uh, we can't hear you, Nancy. Um, just relative to our earlier discussion, we could also use Rimfi to start or do the alignment on the Bill Bauer Park. We're not paying them for that, though. We're not paying them for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. They, they so volunteered, they volunteered to do that for free. Oh, okay. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So. Sorry. Never mind. Okay. Well, I just wanted to kind of bring people up to date on that. And then there's this oddball thing that uh, we heard in a meeting this morning that uh, Steve Beisel is all up in arms. And I, I think I figured out what that's about is that he got a lot of uh, information from the bank because we finished paying off the, uh, the bank loan. And that's kind of a curiosity, but uh, Steve Beisel may have a right of way up there exactly where we're working on that trail. But anyway, that's a that's another topic. Probably for next month, we'll have some information on that. Um, so the last thing on here, uh, Mr. Bremner, is your long promised uh, on-site hike to Eagle Mountain or on the Eagle Mountain Trail. You feel like scheduling that? Sure. Um, about May eleventh. <laughs> How about May 11th? That sounds great to me. Uh, anybody else have a, a suggestion or anybody have a problem with May 11th for doing that hike? Does everybody know where that hike is? I think most of us do, but... Uh, I, anybody... I actually don't. Could you explain? Oh, that's right. Um, of course, you're you're brand new to this. Yeah, Jillian, if, if you go down, you know where the, where Spring Street is and, and uh, um, the access to our, the uh, Inman Trail off Spring Street? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if you're walking up there, if you're walking up there, you're walking up uh, Spring Street, you all of a sudden hook a hard left. When you get to the Inman Trail, maybe a quarter of a mile up Spring Street, you hook a hard left right there. But if you kept going straight, you'd be going up this canyon. And we have a, uh, we have a easement on the trail that goes up that canyon. 
And it's a beautiful hike up there. It actually uh, leads to some interesting country. Nothing that we can develop, um, but it does leave, lead up to an access, uh, trail access to Gog and Magog um, someday in the, in the distant future in a galaxy far, far away, we might be able to do something with that. But I would like to at least uh, go up there, hike up there, and it's, it's a rough, it's not a real rough trail, but it's overgrown a lot. I know Steve's done some work up there, but I think that would be another thing for a work day <clears throat> sometime this summer for OSAC to go up there and clear that out a little bit because it is a it really adds a lot to the to the hikes in uh in manitou that manitou springs has to offer so um it's the problem with the with the uh with the easement is it's a three-year easement uh that, that we have from the cog railroad so we don't really want to put a bunch of money into that but I think we could certainly put some money into that if, if it would, if we get a lot out of it for clearing that as a trail. And I don't know, maybe there's some way of making that work as a bicycle trail or single track trail. I don't know. But anyway, it's no. it's worth it. No, you're shaking your head now, Steve. Okay. No, it's, it's too steep for a bicycle trail. But okay. I, I would like to see people using that trail because homeless people tend to go up there and set up their right. camps. and. The more people we have going back up there, we can discourage that. Right, right. So that's great. Okay, why don't let's, uh, yeah, let's have an OSAC uh, day up there on the on Saturday the eleventh. Um, so you want to meet at say Iron Springs, the Iron Springs? Yeah, the problem up no, there is that there's there's almost no parking except for Iron Springs, which is what five bucks. Well, you can park. You can walk to yeah, get on the bus down, at Memorial downtown. Park. You can take the free bus up. Or, yeah, there we go. Uh, something like that. You know. What, what time walk. do you want to start that, Steve? How about nine? Meet at the Iron Springs. Okay. Meet at Iron Springs at nine. Okay. And I'll send out a reminder because we scheduled this a year ago or so, and um, I had it on my calendar, but apparently it wasn't on anybody else's calendar. And so we didn't do it. So I'll make sure that there's a reminder goes out. Okay, so nine to 11? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, well, um, the only thing left is the director's comments. And do we have any uh, comments that you need to fill in, Jillian? Nope, we covered everything, so. All right, good. Uh, nothing to report. All right, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Nancy? A motion we adjourn. Okay, <laughs> okay. Nancy, you wanna sing? We can't hear you, Nancy. Nancy, we can't hear you. I think we usually have uh, a section for future agenda items. We do have a section for future agenda items. We never use it. Okay, well, I'm giving you one. <laughs> um, I hope soon we're going to discuss the uh, a contract or an agreement for a, a trail layout for Black Canyon. We will do that, and one of the things that I want to do is get in touch with, I don't know if we have to wait for, thanks for bringing that up, I don't know if we have to wait to actually close on the property, but we want to get Kimley Horn in here to give a, a capabilities briefing um, mm -hmm. that they've been wanting to come in and and give to uh, Manitou Springs. Um, right. So we will set, I will set that up. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, okay, now I have a motion to adjourn. <laughs> okay, well, Steve already said that. Do you want to oh, second okay. it? Second. Okay, we are now adjourned.
Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Yeah, you too.